All right, now out the gate, right? I want to show you Zakari's first four offensive possessions, not because it's anything spectacular, but it's going to help you become a better one-on-one -on -one player. Smoke lay right there on that first one. But notice how he's setting all this stuff up, right? Got a good look on that first one. Second one, he had that left, wanted to settle for the jumper, but that just shows you his habits as a player. Third possession, right? Again with the jab. Now he draws a foul. J. Lou doesn't want to pick up another one now, right? Little, lays off a little bit. Boom. Now he's finally able to execute and get his bucket. But he's playing off that jab. If you play your ones and lay yourself based upon your strengths as a player, now you're going to be so much harder to guard. Because now anything that they try to throw at you to take away your best thing, now you develop another counter to it. And now you're just playing the game based upon your strengths. And now J. Lou, right? First offensive possession, second play of the game. <laughs> Got his shit sent. But you had the right. Why go back to the inside, right? Because really notice this. Notice where he's attacking from, right? He's going from the free throw line and not the three-point line. So now you have less steps to be able to get a full step ahead of your defender and bring that ball in quick to the inside for that leg. So if you're attacking from this range, it's going to be easier for the defender to close up that space and then be able to recover. But instead, if you go right here with the right hand, he has to jump through your body or just get extremely high to be able to block that shot. And boom, once again, still working with that jab. But notice this, though. It could have it it been a clip. But still, it could have been a bucket if he had did this. Jab game, right? Boom, shift J. Lou. Right here, you got the whole lane. Why skip off of this and snatch it right back? On top of the fact, even if he does sprint and be able to get in front of you, just a little bump, boom, leg. So a little bump on these drives, gonna be able to get him to exactly where he wants around the rim. Maybe it's just he's not as comfortable going left. Now J. Lou, we know this, right? Shifty players, always you always gonna sag off because you don't want to get mixed. So he's gonna have that midi all day. All day. It's going to be his bread and butter if he wants to win games. Then if he can hit that three ball too, he gets extremely tough to guard. But notice this as a player in one-on-ones. This is what you got to do. So on ones, right, the hang dribbles are going to be your best friend because you can counter it any sort of way possible. But anything you do after that has to be really purposeful. So if you're going to get into a separation move for a jump shot, right, you got to create as much space as you can while being able to stay on balance. Notice, that's the part, being able to stay on balance. So now you can get a shot up. That's that you're not jumping too too far to the right with, too far to the left with. That you can't that you can't control. Even though even though he missed, that's a key thing about ones. And right there, notice right here, notice the sequence. Right, that first one is like, okay, can he shoot? Cause he's been working with the jab and driving all game. Second one. All right, is he really like that? And now you let him rip off two, and now he's got game point. Sometimes in these ones, you can't you can't just give up shots like that. If you even see that first one go down, now you got to step up because if that second one, like I said, game point. And boom, right here. Now Jay Lou's pressing up. Now he's pressing up. He can't let him get that two, but he still got some space. He had a solid look at that one. Five one once again. Game time, right? Still game time. And notice this by Jay Lou though. J. Lou defensively on these jabs. This is how he's got to be able to counter these jabs, right? So instead of guarding, and notice how every time Zakari jabs, he's going to jump out to that jab, right? But realize this, though, right? Your job shouldn't be to take away the jab. Your job should be to eliminate the drive right. And so if he does try to rip right, you're able to cut him off with your body. And so now it's going to leave him out of position where if he does jump out every single jab, the second that he goes left, He's going to break his stance, boom, bring back, create some space. He's going to be able to get into his bag from there. That's what you got to do. Exactly like I just said right there. Beat him to the spot. Stop trying to be so physical with the hands, stopping them with your hands. Move your feet, beat him to the spot. And right here. That was a great pump fake. But let me show you. Let me show you exactly where J. Lou messed up, right? This is where he messed up. Notice his positioning, right? So first. As we've seen throughout this game, Zakari is not as comfortable going left. So what you should do with your positioning as a defender, left foot forward, right hand in front. And so now this leads you to with the left hand in front, use that as your contest hand. And so even if he does pump fake, boom, left right there, you don't got to get off the ground. And so what should be just a left hand contest, stay down on the floor, turn into a right hand contest across his body. Now he jumps for that shot and he gets the whole lane. Your positioning is key, especially with playing ones or anything. Then right here, game time, 6-1. That's tough. That's tough. Like one dribble earlier. It makes a huge difference. Now, J. Lou. This is J. Lou's game right here. Boom. Midi. Knock down that first one. You notice how he's about to build his rhythm though, right? First one. Got the midi. Now, 
He got the lay. But notice how he got this lay right here, though. Boom, little pump fake, rip right. On that left step, he's so under control that he's gonna allow Zakari to jump and then glide across his body to get to the middle. And since Zakari is jumping towards that baseline, that middle is now gonna be open. Then boom, he's able to get that lay. That's tough. Now, notice what it is right here too. Three, midi, layup, three. If you're a player whose strength isn't to necessarily shoot threes, and now you're playing these ones, or you're playing any sort of organized basketball, you gotta make sure you build your rhythm in your areas of strength, and then you take these shots in these other areas. So now you can feel good, and then just let those shots go. But he just elongates these games. And right there by Zakari. Notice this habit on his drives too though, right? So on that first play of the game, you see him go right, and then cut across and drift back to that left side. But he wasn't able to get that because he wasn't able to hang himself in the air long enough so that he could get to that left, get it off the glass. And now he's going left now, and now he tries to drift back right. And the same thing occurs to where you're jumping further out from the rim, so now you have to hang in the air a little longer so that you can now get to your release point on the layup. But now he's in the jump, and he's not even able to get next to the rim so that he can get to that release point for him to make that layup. Avoids one of his weaknesses. And boom, 6-5, it was just 6-1. J-Lou just letting him stay in this game. He's just letting him stay in this game, bro. Clean look, he should've, <laughs> that's tough. That's tough, Had to, about to lose a game, series two up right there, but J-Lou right here though. Boom, just get to your spots. Stop wasting time, get to your spots, get your bucket. And boom, right there by J-Lou, that's great defense, great defense. And notice how this contrasts from when Zakari goes right. When Zakari goes right, right, you'll see J. Lou step out on that first dribble and cut him off. But since he's leading him left, he can't cut him off on the first dribble. He's going to have to be to the spot and be able to get in front and cut him off on that second, right? And boom, braces himself for that contact on that drive. So now he's prepared, since Zakari's a bigger player, for that shoulder to drop down and get hit. Absorbs the contact and is able to get walled up, give a great contest, get the miss. Now, J-Lou right here, right? I like his right-hand pickups from the mid-range way more than his left. Because notice the path in which the ball goes up from his right hand to his release point, right? Straight. If he brings that ball from his left side, there's going to be some diagonal movement, regardless if he brings it more medial before. There's going to be some sort of diagonal movement up to get it to his release point. But if he brings it, brings it from that right, boom, right here, straight up to his release point. And it's, there's less room for air for the ball to be able to miss right or left. Now, boom, with the left, <laughs> missed it by two feet, bro. Every time the ball hit glass, you don't call it, you missed it by two feet. Clarify that. Now he goes for the three. Building rhythm right here. 6-0, right? This is game three, 6-0. Game three, 6-0, right? Mind you. <sighs> Trying to get to his moves, but then boom. This is where right here though, right? Remember I was just saying he should get into his right hand pickups. This is where he could really use that for his separation moves. So notice this, right? Boom, cross, drive, right here. Kind of lost it a little bit, but a good little pound sidestep with the right, bringing that ball right here to that shot pocket on that right side to your shot, gonna help, would help a ton. Instead of being so far out from the rim, having a defender in front of you and trying to step through that, that angle's gonna be tough to get a make. Again, love the pickup way more. And right there, another smoke. All right, what I feel Zakari could do better though is that as he gets on these drives, Seek contact as he's taking these dribbles instead of once he gets right next to the rim. Because now you're creating your angle for yourself to be able to just go straight up and get that layup once you get to the rim by creating contact on that drive. But if you do this right here, try to find contact right there, the defender now has a chance to hollow you out. And now since they hollow you out, you're off balance a little bit. You didn't anticipate them avoiding that contact. And now you go up and you just feel off balance and it just feels unorthodox. Mm. So right here, boom, now 7-1, right? Zakari about to make himself a little comeback starting right now. And notice how he set that up off the gate. So now, boom, dribble left, forces J. Lou to get off his body and create some space, right? But then he brings the ball back. And notice what it does to J. Lou's base. Shifts his base from guarding him, leading him left, to now he's leading him right. And this sets Zakari up for this veer step because now he takes his dribble. And now this opens up the angle for him to put his shoulder right into his body as J. Lou broke his base. And then he finishes through the contact. Now, boom, 7-3, right? 7-3. Game is not done, despite the 7-0 start. That's a great play by J. Lou. 
hollowing him out. Peep it. Because what this is going to do, right? Even though Zakari wants to go left and get back to his right hand, he hollowed him out. And so now, once you do this, Jay Lou's in a position as to where he's not off balance from contact and can be able to go up and block the shot if he goes up with the right hand. So now Zakari is forced to go to his left where he's uncomfortable using. Boom, smoked it. This game was made way longer than it had to be on Jay Lou's part. And even on Zakari a little bit too, he was smoking a lot of lays. 7-5. 7-5. Once again, smoke by Zakari. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. If you just seen this whole thing straight through, the amount of smokes there were. <laughs> but there are a lot of tough buckets too, just like that one. Peep this. Catch, rip and attack, and then notice this dribble right here. What he's about to do with this dribble is gonna set up this whole drive and the whole attack. Created so much space that it forced Zakari now to step up. And now since he steps up, because there's so much space, J. Lou has an angle to drive and it's just enough for him to be able to get in the air, hang, and get that lay. Boom, 8-5. It's still game point now regardless. Any bucket will give J. Lou game. But notice, smoke. Oh my gosh, that's what, three smokes? This should be 8-8 eight, eight right now, damn near, bro. Or something, something close to that. Because there's so many smokes. He had a chance to win. Oh my gosh, I hate these plays. I hate these. You get a clean look, and then you get hacked. Oh my gosh. Then boom, right here. I hate. I didn't like this call either. No call. This that was straight body. Notice, straight body. No ball. Hit body. No foul. But even on Jay Lou's part now though, right? You notice he's tired. Hands on his legs. Boom, pull. Let him get one loose. A seven. And I know Jay Lou's coming off the injury. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure what what exactly, but regardless, he has so many chances to win, close this game out, man. So many. I want to see him win this too, but. Let the best player win. And Sakari stole that one 7 0 comeback. And that's the end of this video. Make sure you subscribe, like, turn on those notifications. We drop videos every other day. Make sure you hit the link in the description to catch the live streams. And we out of here.